Hi fellow bass players, this is my top 10 easy bass lines to play. Sorry if I'm coming across tired, but I've been recording for six hours straight, so I'm wide awake and we're gonna go straight into it and just rock out. So these top 10 were picked by myself personally, and they cover loads of different styles of music, and we're just gonna break them down together, and they're all really, really cool bass lines, and you should know most of them, or at least I would hope you know most of them. So this is the first one, which is Every Breath You Take. Most of you probably know that song already, and fingers crossed, I'm guessing like 90% of you do. If you don't, then you probably should go check out Sting and the Police, because he's an epic bass player and that band is epic. So let's jump into the bass line, and this is just the first little bit. Nice introduction to two finger playing, index and middle. So we're gonna play it like this. So as you can hear, we're pretty much just playing straight notes for all of it. I'm gonna play it again just in a little bit of time. So we're just literally jumping from one note to the next, down a string to the next note, and then to the next note. They're all really nice and consistent, so we just wanna go first finger, second finger. So I'm gonna play that a little bit faster because that was literally just the notes. So this is how it sounds in the song. So when I was playing it the first time, you may have noticed that some of those were a little bit shorter because I was literally just jumping between the notes. That's how it sounds in the track. So that's a nice kind of audible and a visual way of playing this bass line. Super easy, hence why it's number one in our list today. All of these are in a PDF and all of these will be transcribed for you to see. They're all little snippets of all of these songs, so it's not the full song. Just enough to kind of wet your palate and then if you do want to learn more, then you can head over to our website and you can get more information on how to learn these killer bass lines. So I'll play the second one for you then. This is Seven Nation Army by The White Stripes. And this one is number two on our list because although it's got quite a bit of movement, it's all on that one string. So it's really good just to get your hand moving up and down the neck. Really useful for you just to get used to this massive thing right here. So I'll play it just a few more times for you guys and we'll jump on to number three. Cool. So if you're getting some of that string rattle, some of that kind of, this kind of sound, don't worry too much because that is literally just part of moving your fingers across the strings. That's going to happen anyway. So as long as you're hitting all those right notes and you're hitting all those markers, that's cool. That's what we want. So that was number two. Number three is Three Little Birds taking a little bit more of a chilled vibe, going for reggae this time. So Bob Marley, absolute legend. Not that I know him personally, but you know. So for this one, it's a little bit slower. So you want to kind of make those notes roll a little bit more because obviously that's the reggae vibe. Um, so for this one, we're playing open strings, which is cool because it's less work for us bass players. Always taking the easy route, it's good. So playing our A string open to start with, and then obviously jumping up to the seven and nine. And then we've got the next little tiny bit as well, which is an open string again, but we're playing four notes this time. So one, two, three, four. And then jumping to seven and nine again, but on different strings and in a slightly different order. So obviously trying to break these down on your own, the best thing to do is hit that pause button so you can see a little bit more information. And obviously just listen to it and try and play along on your own. So this is the bass line put all together, just so you can hear it at home. So you're trying to get into that kind of bounce feel. You're trying to get into that reggae vibe. So if you close your eyes and actually kind of think of what reggae music sounds like, it's gonna make your playing a little bit more chilled out. So 
everything just kind of rolls a little bit slower than if you were playing a different style of music. So we were playing the open, we were playing the seven, and we were playing the nine, using the two strings closest to us. And then when we're getting to the second bar, we're jumping into the middle two strings. So the A and the D strings for people that know how to tune their bass already. You guys are good because you need to tune this thing, so it's in tune. So the A and the D string was for that second bar, playing zero, seven, and nine again too. So that was our third song. Our fourth song is another classic, but now we're moving into the rock kind of style. And this one is another one bites the dust. John Deacon, absolute legend of a bass player, and I'm assuming 100% of you watching this, fingers crossed, know who Queen are. And if you don't, then you probably should do some research because Queen are massive, and they were really important to music in general. So this bass line is super, super iconic, really simple to play, but obviously everyone does know this bass line if they've heard it at least once. So all of this is on our E string, so we don't even have to go any further than the string closest to us. And we're starting on an open. And then we're also using the three and the five. And they're the only notes we need, zero or open, three and five. So it sounds like this. So nice little easy thing to do is to just roll your fingers, first finger and fourth finger, on the third fret and the fifth fret. If you're not used to using your little finger, then you probably should practice that because little finger comes super handy in terms of bass playing because all the threats are really wide apart. Your little finger will save your bass playing life once you get used to it. So take your time with it and you'll absolutely crack it. Really, really nice kind of groovy bass line and that was number four. So. Number five, we're stepping into a little bit more of like a dancey vibe, a little bit more of a modern vibe. And some of you probably know this already, it's Feel Good Ink. So this bass line's a little bit more, I wanna say tricky, but it's kind of easier as well. The reason why it's a little bit tricky is because we're coming further up the neck. Our first note is six, so we can chop off all of this. Don't chop your bass, please don't, seriously. Don't chop your bass off, but you can just kind of forget from five to zero because they do not exist in this song. So starting from six and moving up. The reason why I think it's quite easy and easier is because the threats are closer together. So no more stretching of the hand, everything can get a bit more squished. The squishing of the fingers is actually a really good thing to do. So let's actually look at what we do. We're playing six, eight, and nine for pretty much all of this bass line. So. So that was just six, eight, nine on the A string, jumping to the D string, playing nine and eight. Nice kind of cool rhythm as well, nice to bop along to. So if you really want to move while playing these bass lines, that's cool, like I massively do, you've probably already noticed, I'm not standing still and it's not because I'm kind of just bouncing and I'm hyper, it's because you just feel the groove and you get into the music a bit more. Get into the music, music, that's what we're talking about. So that was the first bit. The second bit, luckily, pretty much does the same thing. We're using six, nine, and eight again, which is beautiful because everything's in this little tiny shape. So we're starting from the D string this time though. So six, to the nine, to the eight, to the nine, but we're going to the A string, and then to the six on the A string as well. And if you can get really good control over these four fingers, your hand doesn't need to move. You could literally super glue it to the neck. Don't super glue your hand to the neck. You could actually just kind of bolt your hand there, and you don't need to move, your fingers do all the work. Nice, easy kind of bop, as the kids say. I think that's what they say. God knows, I'm too old for that. 
Um, so that was our fifth one, keeping good track, five. We're now on to six. So our sixth one is a little bit faster and a little bit more kind of pure rock. And this is You Really Got Me. It's literally just two notes, but it's getting the coordination. And coordination is a big word, which basically means left hand is talking to the right hand. So they're having a conversation together, apparently like hand puppets, apparently. Um, so they're having a conversation together, which means everything is nice and smooth and sounds very good, or sick or awesome, or whatever word you want to use, or whatever word we now use, depending on when you're watching this video. So it's literally just one and three. Only problem is though, it's on the threads furthest away from us, which means they're massive. So you're going to rely on your first and little finger as always. So. And the easiest way to do it is to just literally try and roll your hand and your fingers on and off. So. So my fingers aren't coming miles away from the bass. Here's a little tip. My fingers aren't coming miles away from the bass. They're just kind of rolling gently onto the threads. So that's going to make it super easy for you to kind of just gauge where you are on the bass. So I'll actually play that a few times for you. And the awkward thing about this is you've got to play that a lot. So you need to make sure that that is locked in and super tight and you're not going to get fatigued. So it's a good thing for bass players to learn when they're a beginner. So good one to add to the list. Moving swiftly on is shut up and dance with me. And I'm not telling anyone at home to shut up. Just FYI, disclaimer. Um, <laughs> not that anyone thought I would be, but I'm not a nice, I'm not a nice guy. Wow, I'm not a bad guy is what I'm meant to be saying. Okay, so this is shut up and dance with me. This one is kind of, I think it's one of two in this list that actually uses muted notes. And this is gonna be super tricky if you're not used to it. All you need to do is just relax your hand so you're not getting a note. And the reason why is if you listen to the bass line, the bass player is filling in a little bit of space in between the notes. So it sounds like this. So you can hear it there. And without that, it doesn't quite sound the same because it rolls onto the next note. So what we want to do is after we've played the notes we need, which is two, when you're moving up to the next note, just relax your hand lightly across the strings. And then you've got all of the muting capability that you need to be able to play the song. So it's not super tricky. It's just awkward if you've never played a mute in your entire life, which is why I put it on this list. I said I was a nice guy. I'm kind of just trying to make you a better bass player. So take it with a pinch of salt. It's going to help. So I'll play that bass line for you. Most of it is on the E string, which is good for us. But every single time you move, you need to put a mute in it. You'll see it in the music, you'll see it in the tab, you'll see it in the notation. So just take your time to work out what is going on in this. So for that last little bit, we need to jump to the A string and then back. So it's getting you really comfortable at jumping across strings which is really useful because no bass player, well, I'm kind of holding my hands up here. There might be bass players out there that do this, but most bass players will not play a single song on just one string because you'd be flying up and down the neck. And that's just so much wasted energy. What is the point? So we want to try and incorporate other strings when necessary. So I'll play that again for you guys. So not too bad, not really that far to move, but it's got those nice little hiccups, which are called mutes, which are written as X's. So those X's are good for something, finally, which is always good. That was number eight. So we're now on to, whoop, that was number seven, sorry. We're now on to number eight, the final stretch. So this one is Pumped Up Kicks. This one was a really popular song. I want to say back in the day, but it wasn't really that long ago. 
Um, it's kind of one of those things where some of the kids would be like, that's so yesterday. And some of the older people watching this would be like, it was only last year, like, what do you want about? So it's one of those songs that was quite popular back in the day, which I think was like four or five years ago. Can't remember exactly when it came out, but I think it was around about then. But anyway, you're not watching this to find out about the song. You're watching this to find out about the bass line. So let's actually get to it. This one is quite cool because this one is like, once again, kind of bouncing. It's got a really decent groove. This one includes three strings. So we're finally kind of starting to incorporate a lot more strings into our playing, which is really good because you want to be able to play all four strings really well because then you can just fly across the bass. So this song is a really good introduction into that kind of style of playing. So we're starting on the one from the E string and the rest of the kind of bass line just bounces along. We're pretty much using one, three and four for most of this song. So I'll play it a few times for you slowly so you can see where my fingers are going. So this is the first threat on the E string. So you can see I'm using quite a few different fingers. I'm using my first, my third and fourth but I'm not actually playing any note on the second threat. So if you had a hacksaw, don't do this, but you could just hack that threat off, don't. But metaphorically you can. And that means we're just playing one, three, and four. And I'll play it one more time before we move on to number nine. We're almost at the end of the list. So one more time. Hopefully you guys can see, obviously I'm moving across between one, three, and four, depending on what string I'm playing. Nothing is on the G string, the G string is gone, we don't have to think about it. So it's just the E, the A, and the D string, and we're set to blast through it all. So, this is number nine, we're finally almost at the end of the list. Um, it'd be cool, obviously, to know what your top ten would be, but this is my top ten, just because these are a really good introduction into playing bass in several different styles. And I like playing loads of different music, so it's good to pass that knowledge on to everyone watching. So this is number nine, which is Under Pressure, another Queen track. This one is a really cool kind of groove because it starts to get a little bit faster. And it's a really good introduction into like different rhythms that you can put together. But in terms of notes, this one is probably the easiest. And it's just because we only play two notes and they're both on 12. So if everyone is looking down at their bass going, well, where's 12? There's a lot of notes here, where is 12? The double dot on the side of your bass, which you can't see because I'm not tilting my bass because it will break my neck. You don't want to watch me break my neck alive, trust me. So the double dot is 12. And you also have an inlay if you've got inlays on your bass. So this one right here is 12. We want to do 12 on the D string and 12 on the A string, but we want to be super careful to get the right rhythm. So it's going to sound like this. rhythms are really similar but then we have da da where all of the notes kind of bleed together quite quickly and the rhythm picks up so da 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 and you just want to be kind of conscious of that because it's super easy to miss it if you're not used to playing that rhythm hence why it's in my top 10 easy bass lines and it's a really really nice groove to get into listen to the track use the pdf which comes along with this video and it will help you break it down and take your time and you'll sail through it, you'll crack it all. Do not worry. So we're finally at number 10. Let's find out what it is. Big unveil, smoke and fireworks. So number 10 is probably one of the most iconic bass lines ever. And it's iconic by people that don't even play bass. It's called The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. So a lot of people know that. I'm gonna kind of stick my neck out and probably get it wrong so the trolls can comment below. Um, I think it's from the Top Gear... It's supposed to be easy bass lines! <laughs> I think it's from the Top Gear theme? Maybe? I know it's from a TV programme, and I know... Or it might be the F1, I think it's the F1 theme tune. Just ignore me. But, yeah, it's from a theme tune, it's on TV, 
and it's the opening, and that's why loads of people know it. And it is really iconic as a bass line. It is super easy to play though. Ignore the haters. <laughs> so this is the final 10th bass line on my top 10 list. And it sounds like this. So some of you may be looking, I'll play it again, don't worry. Some of you may be looking going, that's pretty quick. And yes, it is, but because we're only playing zero, three, and two, as long as you're using your first and second finger, it's really good to get your hand rolling off the threads quickly. And hence why it's my number 10 on this list, because it's gonna get your fingers pretty much tap dancing off the string. So don't push down too hard, just bounce off the notes. And once again, there is a common theme to most of these. This bass line is only using the two strings closest to us, the E and the A string. And a lot of these bass lines literally only use two strings and add a push three. And most of the notes are really close together. You're only moving two or three threats either time, which is why they're classified as easy bass lines. They're fast, so you will have to practice them, but they're not super tricky. And in terms of the grand scope of bass lines, they do fit into what we class as an easy bass line. So that was my top 10. It'd be awesome to know what your top 10 is as well, but that was my top 10 easy bass lines. The PDF is below, so click below to get that because you will need it to practice these. And don't forget to hit subscribe to see more content from us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>